All right, in your book, uh, you write, the book you're selling down there at Barnes & Noble today, you write, the civil rights movement was a few years in front of me. I was too young to participate when they first started the Freedom Rides and the sit-ins. So on a day-to-day -day basis, it didn't have an impact. I just kept going to school, doing what I was supposed to do, and stayed out of trouble. I didn't go downtown and try to participate in sit-ins. Counter to our real feelings, we decided to avoid trouble by moving to the back of the bus when the driver told us to. Dad always said, stay out of trouble, and we did. Where do you think black people would be sitting on the bus today if Rosa Parks had followed your father's advice? My father was not giving Rosa Parks advice. Here again, Lawrence, you are distorting the intent of what I said. I was a high school student. The college students were doing the sit-ins. The college students were doing the freedom rides. If I had been a college student, I probably would have been participating. But if you are a high school student in the 10th or 11th grade, you're under 18 years of age, you didn't need to get arrested and be in the middle of that. That was the intent of what I said relative to me not being involved. Now, I was impacted by that on a daily basis simply because I was living in Atlanta, Georgia when all of this was going on. It was not prudent. This is what my dad meant. It was not prudent for a high school student to be in the middle of what was going on in terms of those demonstrations. And thanks to Rosa Parks, yes, she struck a chord with a lot of people that helped to lead to the desegregation of the buses as well as she was a big part of the whole civil rights movement and we are all very grateful to her for that. Mr. Kane, in fact, you were in college from 1963 to 1967 at the height of the civil rights movement, exactly when the most important demonstrations and protests were going on. You could easily, as a student at Morehouse, between 1963 and 1967, actively participated in the kinds of protests that got African Americans the rights they enjoy today. You watched from that perspective at Morehouse when you were not participating in those processes, you watched black college students from around the country and white college students from around the country come to the South and be murdered fighting for the rights of African Americans. Do you regret sitting on those sidelines at that time? Lawrence, your attempt to say that I sat on the sidelines is an irrelevant comparison that you are trying to deduce from that um, particular in your point book. in time. It's now, in your now, book. Now, Lawrence, I, I know what's in my book. Now, let me ask you a question. Did you expect every black student in every black college in America to be out there in the middle of every fight? The answer is no. So for you to say, why was I sitting on the sidelines, I think that that is an inaccurate deduction that you are trying to make. You didn't know, Lawrence, what I was doing with the rest of my life. You didn't know what my family situation may have been. Maybe, just maybe, I had a sick relative, which is why I might not have been sitting in or doing the Freedom Rides. So what I'm saying, Lawrence, is with all due respect, my friend, your deduction is incorrect and it's not logical okay well I, I gave your book a fair reading and I didn't read anything about a sick friend what what I read was a deliberate decision to not participate in the civil rights movement and the civil rights protests and I read a misleading sentence that indicated that in time you were that, that what you tried to say here in the show that you were in high school at that time when in fact you were in college from 1963 to 1967 right where it's happening in Atlanta, Georgia. Lawrence, I'm going to I'm going to try this one more time. I graduated from high school in 1963. Okay? I didn't start college until the fall of 1963. Now, I don't understand why you are trying to make a big deal out of this small point when we have an economy that is on life support. We got 14 million people out of work and you want to try and deduce something that is incorrect from my words in my book, okay? Let's okay, do let's, the people let, of this country a service, Lawrence. All right, let's go to something you said on The View the other day. You said on The View that being gay is a choice, and we got a question on Twitter today that says, how can you say that being gay is a choice? Did you choose to be straight? Lawrence, there will always be a difference of opinion. Like I told Joy Behar, 
She has her opinion. I have my opinion. It's a difference of opinion. Next question, please. The next question is coming up.